Hi, I'm David Ferry and I reside in New Zealand and I'd like to talk to you about the Fuji X100F camera. Um, I've been using it now for 18 months and um, in that time I've really um, begun, to, uh, begun to understand the, uh, the advantages of this camera um, and also some of the disadvantages. And I know what I like and I know what's not so good and I'm going to offer some, um, for what it's worth, I'm going to offer some suggestions as to how this camera could um, even become better um, than it is now. Let's get some things out of the way first and foremost. Um, I believe that many of the camera reviewers don't really look at the practical use of these cameras, rather they focus on specifications. And I think that's wrong, and I think that people need to um, sometimes move away from that. So the objective of this little um, YouTube clip is to give you practical experience, or my practical experience, about this camera. So who's it for? Well, it's not for a sports photographer. It's probably not for a wedding photographer. It's probably not for a natural history photographer. It doesn't have an interchangeable lens. So if you want a camera with an interchangeable lens, forget this one straight away. It's not going to do the job. It's not designed to do that. The fixed uh, 35 millimeter equivalent lens is ideal for those people who are after spontaneous moments, perhaps street photography, or moments where discretion is required. And to that end, this camera does it very, very well. The lens, a lot of people, again, mainly reviewers, say that the lens is soft and lacking um, at f2. But from a practical point of view, and having blown up many, many photos to a3 plus size and beyond, I can tell you the lens is entirely satisfactory. Um, it provides beautiful contrast. Um, if you shoot colour, um, you'll find that the colour uh, the colour is good. Um, the colour accuracy is superb. So don't be put off by those people who say that the lens is, a, uh, is, a, is an Achilles heel. It's not. The lens is just fine on this camera. It works well. You'll be delighted with the results. Um, having said that, um, there are some things that I think could be better, um, and we'll get to those a little bit later. You'll see that I always have a lens hood on this lens, because if there is one thing that the camera doesn't do particularly well, it's, um, it's, it's control straight light or, or side lighting. So I would advise you to use a lens hood at all times just to stop that stray light sneaking in, in the side and, um, and perhaps causing flare. What I also really like about the camera, it suits me and it may not suit everybody, is I love the direct input of all the key uh, functions on the camera. Exposure compensation dial, shutter dial, shutter speed dial, and aperturing around here. Now to me, and for the sort of photography that I do, that's perfect. I can preset everything on this camera before I'm even at my subject, um, and I'm ready to go. I don't have to look at any screen or any menus. It's direct, I glance down, yep, I'm all set, bang, ready for action. Now to me, that's a real strong point, and I hope that um, that never changes in any models that, that might come in the future. So that's a real bonus. Moving on, the other thing that's unique about this camera, and perhaps one or two others, is the viewfinder system. You'll know that it has an electronic as well as an optical viewfinder. Now, I use the optical viewfinder and I find it absolutely superb. To me, there's nothing better than looking through a, a plain glass window with beautiful bright line viewfinders, with a beautiful bright line frame to tell me exactly what is and isn't in the frame. It's clear, I'm not distracted by uh, contrast or exposure, I'm free to shoot. And that is the sort of photography that I enjoy doing. It's spontaneous. I'm not constantly tweaking fig buttons or switches to try and get it, get it right. I'm focusing solely on what I'm seeing through that little 
a glass viewfinder inside those little bright frames. <clears throat> it suits me. The electronic viewfinder on the camera is, I believe, an Achilles heel. Um, and the reason I say that is quite simply because the accuracy of the electronic viewfinder in this camera is not good. It continually gives false information in terms of exposure, in terms of contrast, and in terms of colour. I can't rely on the electronic viewfinder to be accurate. Um, and I think that that is something that Fuji really need to look at in the next version of this camera. The other thing, of course, like everything, is the bigger the better, and if Fuji could somehow make that viewfinder bigger, that would be a real bonus to me. Um, it's okay, it's fine to look through, but bigger's good, bigger the better. Um, but the fact that you've got both options of both an optical uh, and a electronic viewfinder um, are a very, very strong selling point. There are some other things that I don't like about the camera um, or that I think could be improved. The shutter release button as it stands on this camera is not good. To my way of thinking it needs to be bigger. Um, for some reason Fuji insists on putting a screw thread option in it so that you can use an old um, screw, screw thread uh, cable release but you know really? If anybody, does anybody still use one of those? Rather, I'd like to see them redesign it, take out that thread, which is also um, a, an aperture for dust and dirt to get down through, and to replace it with a much bigger, softer button, similar to the Leica QL, uh, sorry, the Leica Q2, which I think has a, a much bigger, softer release button. So that's something I'd really like to see uh, Fuji improve on next models. The on-off switch also is a little bit flimsy. I think they need to kind of look at that as well in order to make it um, a, better, a better machine. Moving on, um, you know, waterproofing or weather resistance would be another feature that I would really like to see included in the next model. Um, there is a tendency for this camera to have a few uh, areas where dirt or dust can get inside and um, I think that some degree of weather resistance in a camera like this would be most desirable. After all, you know, we're not only shooting in, um, in bright sunny conditions, we're also shooting in rain and snow and dust and dirt. And, um, uh, you know, some degree of weather resistance uh, would be most desirable. The little button at the back here, there's a little button here. I mean, that's very, very open, lots of dust and and dirt can very, very easily get into, into that button there. Um, that needs to be refined. <coughs> Pardon me. Moving on, some people like a tilt screen. I have no interest in a tilt screen whatsoever. Um, if you want a tilt screen, don't buy this camera. It's not for you. The fact that it's plush and flush to the body um, suits me just fine. Touch screen, optional, I don't really mind one way or the other. Um, again, the way I see it, it's one more thing to uh, break down over a period of time. So I'm perfectly happy to live with the existing setup. Autofocus on the camera is not blazingly fast. It's okay. It's probably fine for most applications. Um, in street photography, it seems to work well, although I would suggest you get used to pre-focusing and letting subjects walk into the, um, into the frame. It could always be better. Um, we always want something sharper uh, and quicker. And I think that um, Fuji also could um, improve this model by providing a, um, a more responsive auto-focusing system. Having said that, I only ever use the one-shot single-frame autofocusing. I don't use multi-autofocus. I don't use eye focus. I don't use head focus. Those sorts of things don't appeal to me. I just use the center spot focus, and um, it's pretty good. Certainly significantly better than previous Fuji X-Series model um, autofocusing systems. 
I can live with it very easily. It's adequate for most uh, photographic situations that I've found myself in. A couple of other little bugbears about the camera, which I really hope Fuji would, would look at in the future, um, and they concern um, manual focusing of the camera. The manual focusing of the camera could be improved significantly, reasonably easily in my view. First and foremost, I would like them to include on the uh, manual focus ring distance settings so that I can pre-focus to a set distance ready to go. However, what Fuji also needs to do is to ensure that when the camera is turned off that the focusing distance remains the same as when you turn the camera off. At the moment, if I've manually focused at two meters and I turn the camera off and then turn it back on again, it's focused somewhere completely different. It would be a real bonus if Fuji could design the camera so that if you're focusing manually, it stays in that, at that focus point whether you turn the camera on or off. So if I turn the camera off to save batteries and then all of a sudden I, I see an image coming up, it's about two meters away, I can set it, turn the camera on, bang, without having to worry about autofocus at all. So that's one thing that's a little disappointing and I'd, I'd love them to do that. So first and foremost, um, focusing distance on the focusing ring so that I can preset it. And secondly, that it stays on the same position when I turn the camera off. And when I turn it on again, it stays at that exact same focus point. I think that would be a real significant improvement on this model. Um, the other thing I wish to talk about is the digital zoom in this camera. So remember, it's a 35mm lens, which is quite wide. But um, remember also, it has a um, digital zoom, zoom built in. Uh, in fact, it has two. It has a, a 50 millimeter and a 70 millimeter. I, for one, find the 50 millimeter invaluable from time to time. Um, and the way it works is beautiful. You switch it to 50, and the little bright line viewfinder uh, sets itself automatically to 50, and away you go. And as a street photographer, I find that really useful because it enables me to see what is and isn't coming into the frame. And um, so if you set it at 50, um, you can see the comings and goings of what's going on before the subject enters the frame, at which time push the button and you get quite a nice shot. Okay, people will say, oh, but you're only digitally cropping, you're losing uh, resolution. And yeah, that's true. You're only taking the center of the, uh, of the sensor. Nevertheless, for most shots, uh, and again, due to the, you know, the resolution of the, the lens and, and I guess the sensor, um, those shots are very, very good. It's hard to define the difference between uh, 28 and, let's say, 50. So it's something that's um, underrated in this camera, and um, you know I'd urge you to, to learn how to set it up and to use it. But here's the thing. What I would like Fuji to do is to enable us to leave it on at that setting. So even when we turn the camera off, if we've been using the 50 millimeter um, option, then when we turn the camera back on, it stays at the 50 millimeter option. At the moment, you turn the camera off and it automatically reverts back to 35. So it's just a niggly little thing, but it would be so nice to be able just to turn the camera off, turn it back on again, you've still got your 50 millimeter lines and away you go shooting. They're only small things, but they're just things that, you know, if they, uh, if they manage to, to, to improve upon, would make this camera even better still. I'm not a Fuji f person, um, please understand that. I, over the years I've used many, many different cameras. Um, so I'm not a Fuji fanboy, or uh, but I am a working photographer, keen to get the best images I, I can. I've now used the camera, as I said, in China, um, in uh, Hong Kong, in Australia, in Papua New Guinea, and in Bali. And um, whilst it's not perfect, it's been a real pleasure to, to use this camera. So that's about it, really. It's a great camera, but it may not be for you. As I said, if you're into, uh, you know, perhaps wedding photography or natural history, forget this camera. It ain't designed for you. It's not made for you. 
Um, but if you're after something that's light, accurate, precise, reasonably fast, with great picture quality, it's the sort of camera that I would recommend. I've already talked about the things that I would like to see improved in the next model. I don't think it'll happen. But um, boy, if Fuji really wanted to make this a, a, an absolute winner, um, those are the sorts of things that I, uh, that I would like to see in the next model. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please feel free to ask me any questions or any other queries that you might have uh, regarding the camera. Um, I think I've covered most of the bases. The camera is certainly very, very flexible in terms of being able to set it up the way you want it. Uh, I shoot primarily black and white as I mentioned, but I've also got presets for um, the classic chrome option, which I just use by adjusting the quick, uh, the quick button on the back of the camera. Um, that works nicely for me. It's really, really practical. Battery use, good. It's a lot better than the previous models. They now use the same battery as uh, their bigger cameras, their bigger Fuji cameras. I seem to get about 300 th uh, shots per battery, but once again, if you're out for a day, make sure you have a spare battery because inevitably it'll, uh, it will run out. But nevertheless, it's a lot better. Again, a significant improvement over the, uh, over the, over the previous models. Um, any other questions, please feel free to, uh, you know, write to me on YouTube, uh, my email address um, or my website, please have a look at that. And in the meantime, um, get into it. Good luck with your photography and, um, and um, keep it up.